The first step in identifying a drug is to perform a battery of color tests. They're fast, simple, easy, and they require very little drug sample. This is a standard sample of marijuana. Marijuana is the most widely used illegal drug in the United States. Marijuana cannot be analyzed using a basic color test because the active ingredient, THC, has to be extracted first. A basic solvent, such as acetone, can be added to extract the THC. After shaking for one minute, the THC has been extracted from the marijuana. You can take the extract and place it into a test tube. Because there is still acetone left in the test tube, it is necessary to place the tube in a hot water bath. Now that the acetone has been evaporated, th the THC extract is left in the test tube. Next, you add the duquinolivine reagent. This reagent is a mixture of acid aldehyde and vanillin. The duquinolivine reagent is added to form a resonance stabilized and conjugated chrome core by a condensation reaction. After shaking for 30 seconds, the concentrated hydrochloric acid is added. Hydrochloric acid is added to protonate the mixture and drives the condensation reaction, acting as a catalyst. Now, the test tube is shaken for 30 seconds and placed in a hot water bath for two to four minutes. After heating for around two minutes, a purple color is observed, which is due to the completion of the condensation reaction, which forms a chromophore. A chromophore is the part of a molecule responsible for its color. After the test tube has been cooled, chloroform is added to the test tube and shaken for about 20 seconds. More chloroform is added to aid in the partitioning of the THC into the organic layer. Due to the purple color, the presence of THC can be confirmed. Notice how the THC has partitioned into the bottom layer because it is soluble in the organic layer but insoluble in the aqueous layer. This is because THC is fat soluble. The sample right here is a sample of cocaine, which is one of the oldest known drugs and is also one of the most common drugs of abuse. Before any uh, color test can be performed, a well plate must be labeled for both the drug sample and the blank so that you have something to compare the drug to. After labeling the well plate, a very small portion of the drug sample in question is placed into each well and not into each of the blank spots. The first reagent, which is the marquee reagent, is added to both and the resulting color is noted. In this case, no color change occurs, which means that we can progress to the next test, which is the cobalt thiocyanate. It begins as a pink color and when added to the drug, forms a dark blue complex. Based on this color, a third and final reagent can be used to confirm the presence of cocaine, which is the mandolin reagent. It starts out as a very orange-yellow color and when added to the reagent, forms a very light orangish color. Based on the progression of color changes, it can be concluded that our standard sample of cocaine is in fact cocaine. We recently received an unknown drug sample from a drug raid. This sample must be identified to ensure the proper charges are brought upon the suspect. Whenever a sample is received into a crime lab, it must be logged in using a form such as this. Since I will be the one performing the chemical spot test on an unknown drug, it must first be relinquished to me. This is the marquee reagent. Due to the fact that there is no reaction, the next reagent we'll be using is cobalt thiocyanate. Due to the blue color change, the next reagent we'll be using is the mandolin reagent. Due to this orange color, the next reagent we'll be using is the ferric chloride. Based on the color changes seen here, it can be concluded that the drug in question is cocaine. However, this conclusion is only presumptive in other conformatory analysis, such as gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, or Fourier transform 
infrared spectroscopy must be conducted.